So we're going to start looking at area today. So before we do that, let's talk about what would you ever want the area between a function and the x-axis for. So area underneath the curve is good for things, lots of things, that you might not think about. So say that you've got a graph of speed over time. The area underneath that curve actually represents the total distance traveled. If I was to get all of this space, that would give me how far I've traveled in this amount of time. You can kind of use your units to think about it because my vertical axis here would be measured in miles per hour. My horizontal axis is in hours. So if I take something measured in miles per hour and thinking about area, length times width, I know it's not a rectangle, but we'll deal with that in a second. But thinking about area, multiplying those two together, your hours would divide out and you would just get a result that is the number of miles traveled. Area also can represent things like probability, like if you remember our normal or our bell curve from stats, the area underneath that curve we did with ugly tables, but really if you know calculus, you can make your life easier when you're finding your probabilities. This is also going to let us find the average value of any function, and average values are super handy, like average profit. So there's all sorts of things we might want to find the area underneath a curve for. Okay, so basically what we're going to be focusing on today is estimating or approximating the area between a function and the x-axis. So we're going to do this by breaking up our region into little rectangles because rectangles are easy to find the area of. And then we're going to find the area of each rectangle one by one using width times height and then add them all together. So we're still adding stuff up. This time we're adding up area of rectangles. So you can do what's called a left endpoint sum or a right endpoint sum. So right now what's showing is a left endpoint sum because the left endpoint of each rectangle is touching my function. If I was doing a right endpoint sum, my right endpoint of each rectangle would be touching my function. So there's a little bit of difference between those two. Additionally, um, what's showing right now, the right endpoint sum, is what's called a lower sum because it underestimates my rectangle. It's not filling in all of this space. There's a lot of gaps. So if I add up the area of these four rectangles, the area is going to be an underestimate of the true area. If I was left endpoint sum on this one, it would overestimate it because I'd have extra area for my rectangles that is not actually inside the curve of my function. The estimate of the area under our function to the x-axis. And you're right, it's not. The fewer rectangles we use, the worse our estimate is going to be. So what we're working up to is we could make our rectangles smaller, skinnier. They'd better fit our function's curves. But I also don't want to add up by hand the area of like 48 rectangles. So we're going to end up taking and letting the number of rectangles approach infinity and do the limit of one of our summation formulas as n approaches infinity. Let's actually estimate the area underneath the curve 5 minus x squared using a lower sum or a right endpoint sum in this case. I always take it back to area equals length times width, or in this case, it's easier to think of as height times width. Now, notation-wise, my height is my output of my function, so it's like f of x. And my width is my width of my rectangle. It's the change in my x values. So notation for it is going to be delta x or the change in x. And I can figure out what delta x is or the width of each rectangle by thinking, okay, I'm going on the interval from 0 to 2. And I'm splitting it into four rectangles. So let's take 2 minus 0 and divide by 4. Each rectangle is going to have a width of 1 half. Every rectangle is going to have a different height, so let's figure out our height for each one of these rectangles. If you think about where it's touching at, I'm going to go ahead and label my x-coordinates of all of those endpoints. So counting by one-halves on my x-values. 
Now to get my y values, which is going to be my height of each rectangle, I need to go back up to my original function, y equals 5 minus x squared, and actually plug in the x coordinate for each of those points. So like for my first one, 5 minus 1 half squared, or 5 minus 1 fourth is going to give me 19 fourths for the height of that first rectangle. Now I'm going to do it for the rest of them. I get 4, and then I get 11 over 4, and my last one's height is 1. So now I have the height of each one of my rectangles. So let's find the rectangle's area and then add them all up to get our approximation for our area underneath our curve. So I have first rectangle, height times width, and so on and so forth. One thing that might actually make this a little easier is I could factor a one half out of all of those since my width is the same on each rectangle and then add up all of my heights and multiply that result by one half. Especially if I was gonna type this in a calculator, that would make it easier. So I get 25 over four units squared. Now we're looking at the area between y equals square root x and the x-axis. So let me do a little sketch here. Square root x kind of looks like that. And we're approximating this area between the x values of one and seven. We're supposed to use an upper sum, which if you think about this graph, to get an overestimate for my area, my rectangles would have to be touching on the right-hand side of each rectangle. And the width of each one, if I do seven minus one, six divided by my six rectangles, each rectangle is gonna have a width of one. Okay, I don't really wanna draw them over on my picture, so I'm just kinda doing some little approximation here. So imagine this as my six rectangles along my x-axis between the x values of one and seven, width of one each. Okay, so the height for each of these rectangles is what I get when I plug in my right endpoint. So my first one, it's gonna be plugging in two into my y value equals square root x function. So the height of that first rectangle is square root two. If I think about the next one, it's touching or its height is at the x value of three, so it's square root three all the way through square root seven. So if I take my width of one times the height of each one of those, I basically have one times square root two plus one times square root three all the way through one times square root seven. Or I could factor it out. In this case, you don't really need to because hey, it's just one. But if you type those into a calculator and approximate, it's approximately 12.48 square units. We're gonna switch to a lower sum. So I'm gonna do a little copy and pasting here. That was an overestimate of my area. This one's gonna be an underestimate. So my height of my rectangle is gonna be a little bit different because to draw this picture and underestimate my area, I actually need a left endpoint sum instead of a right endpoint sum. So to get the height of each rectangle, I'm going to have to plug in the X coordinate where it touches on the left hand side instead of the right hand side. So for my first rectangle, it touches at the X value of one so I'm gonna plug in one to my square root function and its height is just gonna be one. My second one is gonna be square root two, so on and so forth. And my last one has a height of square root of six. So if I add all those up, and again, I would just type this into your calculator, you're gonna get approximately 10.83 square units.